at the King Center in Atlanta, across the pool in which the crypts of Martin Luther and Coretta Scott King are pedestaled, sits a stand which showcases the splendor of the eternal flame. The eternal flame which dances 24 seven symbolizes the continuing effort to realize Dr. King's dream of the beloved community, which was his vision for a world of justice, peace and equality for everyone everywhere. And if you visit the King Center at night, the eternal flame will draw your eye in a magical way, summoning you to it, perhaps as a way to call you to prayer or to kindle hope within you that our world could indeed unite into one beloved community of love, kindness, respect, fairness, and justice. All the people of the world, and especially people of African descent, yearn for this world that Dr. King imagined and ultimately sacrificed his life for. What would it be like to live in one beloved community? There is an 80s band, uh, uh, an 80s song by the band, The Bangles, that shares its title with Dr. King's alluring fire monument. The writer invites a partner to explore a world with her, a world that is passionate and filled with love and excitement and mutual understanding, a world for lovers. It goes like this. Close your eyes, give me your hand, darling. Do you feel my heart beating? Do you understand? Do you feel the same? Am I only dreaming? Is this burning an eternal flame? Do you remember the song? This is perhaps a little bit romanticized to what black people are seeking and what Dr. King was envisioning in his longing for a beloved community. But still, many parts of this one verse ring true. People of African descent distressingly often wonders, do you see us? Do you hear us? Do you understand the suffering we endure that oftentimes feel like it's never ending? Are you able to imagine our pain? Will you stand with me? Are you willing to be partners in a beloved community? In our scripture today, Luke 5, 1 to 11, we read of Jesus's first encounter with and introduction to Simon Peter. Jesus was being pressed upon by a large crowd that gathered to hear him speak. And at the water's edge, he decided that it may be best to borrow a boat to possibly gain a better vantage point to speak to the people and also perhaps a place where he could sit. The borrowed boat belonged to Simon Peter and perhaps out of gratitude afterwards, Jesus wanted to gift the weary fisherman. He suggested that Peter put the boat back out into deep water but Peter thought it was pretty pointless, considering he had fished all night long and yielded nothing. But Peter decided to humor Jesus. He took the boat out and lowered his nets, and whoa! Verse 6 tells us that so much fish was caught that the nets were unable to hold the multitude of it, and so the, the nets began to break. What a wonderful problem for fishermen to have. But it's the next verse that is applicable to our theme today of creating a beloved community. Verse 7 says, And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other boat, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they, the boats, began to sink. 
A beloved community cannot be recreated without partnerships. In the coastal villages of Gambia, West Africa, many fishermen need to form alliances when fish is scarce. They often combine their nets to cover a larger area to secure as much fish as possible. And then at the end of the day, they split the catch. It is a successful fishing strategy that enables each fisherman to make a little money or at least feed his family. Partnerships are necessary for survival. Partnerships between people of the different races, backgrounds, and cultures are necessary for the survival of each other and for the progress of our world to combat things that would otherwise destroy all of us. This world pandemic that we're just waiting out of comes to mind. A beloved world community requires partnerships. So Peter's call for help from the partners of the other fishing boat was to ensure that his nets did not break all the way through from the weight of the big haul. People of African descent have been in Peter's boat more times than we can imagine. Bodies and minds have felt the pressure of nets that are too full of debilitating systemic racism. The rips and tears in the nets are rips and tears in communities struggling to breathe and struggling for basic fairness and justice. Members of a beloved community are called to help to secure the nets so that they do not break all the way through and become totally destroyed and useless. Beloved community members are called to take some weight off the boat so that the boat does not capsize. And when the load is eased and the boat is stabilized, the beloved community is summoned to participate in the mending of nets and the feasting together afterwards. Peter also wanted to share his bounty. I mean, what good was it to benefit from that amazing gift of Jesus and not share it with the others? What does the sharing of the bounty of Jesus look like? In Windsor, Ontario, right on the Canadian-American border, from spring to fall, hundreds of people gather daily to fish from the beautiful Detroit River. But there is a phenomenal, beloved community that is being fostered by fishing along the Detroit River. Many of the people along the river fish for sport, and they try to capture the biggest and most elusive of the river fish. And they use a catch and release system. Then there became a growing realization that many others who fish along the river do so out of necessity. Low income and homeless members of the community stand along the river day after day, trying to catch as much as they can in an attempt to address their food insecurity. But over time, the focus of the folks who fish for sport shifted from trying to catch the biggest fish to catch in as many fish as possible, to fill the coolers of the folks who fish for food security. It's a beautiful example of how members of a beloved community work to care for each other in the securing and sharing of bounty. And it's also an interesting twist of how we think of the phrase, fishing for men. In this beloved community in Windsor, Ontario, along the Detroit border, fishing for men is simply about fishing for others to have a meal. Dr. King's vision of a beloved community was one for a world of justice and peace and equality for everyone everywhere. And the eternal flame at the King Center blazes to maintain hope in the hearts of everyone that this vision could be maintained, could be realized. This is Epiphany's light, guiding us into Black History Month, 
May we all celebrate as a beloved, united community. Thanks be to God. Amen.